Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So, I've been working through in the last couple videos the process I'm going to go to creating my advent calendar bunting journal of stitchery. So if you've tuned into this one, I'd probably recommend you stop, go back, find the first one and follow me through because you'll see how I've been sort of brainstorming with everyone how I'm going to put this um, together. And I really wanted to do this at the beginning so that as I stitch, I didn't get to the end and go, oh, I wish I had have done this. And because we've all done the um, earlier uh, projects with the girls, the Roxy girls. Um, we've sort of all been either doing or watching others create different ways to put together the journal. I did a tab spine on my journal, um, but Roxy girls, Rachel and Sarah, they did different versions as well. So this one, I'm going to be doing the accordion style, which Rachel did in hers. And I've done it before in other journals and I think it's going to work well with this particular project because I don't know how many pieces I'll be stitching at this stage. If time permits, I'd love to stitch 25, one for every day of December. If it doesn't, well then it might just be 12, the 12 days of Christmas. That'd be my minimum. So I've got to work out how I'm going to store it now in my journal. I've worked out how I'm going to hang the pieces on uh, some cord. I've worked out the buttons are going to be used in the corner to attach the panels to hide it so that on the 1st of December this will be revealed. So all of that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. So I started working on how I'm going to put it into my book. Well, mine is going to be landscape for a start so my book will open like that my fabric inside is going to be accordion style so that it will open like so so i'll just show you some little tips that i discovered because i've had fabric rolling everywhere here for the last hour cutting this to size the first thing i did is i using my book worked out what size I needed my fabric to be and I came very close to the cover edge because I don't mind if there's bits and pieces sort of hanging over in the way of threads so my cover is eight inches by eleven and a quarter so it's pretty big it's an encyclopedia size cover encyclopedias would be perfect for this too and there's heaps of them around in op shops and there's my fabric 11, 11 inches by <clears throat> just under eight. So it's just inside the um, uh, cover itself. I then had a bolt of calico that I picked up from Spotlight. So it had this wrapper around it and that tells me it's five meters of fabric and it was 90 centimeters wide. So they've folded it on the bolt of fabric like so. So I'll just spin this around so you can see sort of how I, I did this. I then measured along, snipped it and ripped it, okay? And I ripped right through, right the whole bolt of fabric. I was thinking I'd only need three meters, but as I sort of kept rolling through the process of ripping and creating the concertina, I realized that I just, probably wouldn't have enough pages and I thought well how many am I going to need does it really matter I don't need that decision at this stage so I just kept going so not only did I rip it the height I also ripped off the selvage so that measurement there would be just under 11 inches allowing for that um, selvage to come off as well so I've wrapped it back onto my bolt and it's out of the way the selvage that was left is fantastic for doing all sorts of things with in journaling. So I've sliced a bit of um, cardboard, <clears throat> wrapped it onto there, and that can be used for something else. So too good not to use. I even used a little bit of selvage there, the same thing. So it will probably pop up throughout my project. The other thing while I was wrapping this on my um, card here, this would make great cordage for your pieces to actually be pinned to or buttoned to or tied to to create the bunting effect. 
So even that could be used. Anyway, I'm going to leave it sit there if I can to cover this glare from the light. So I'll, hopefully that won't be in our way. <clears throat> now, the actual um, concertina building. So if my width has to be around that eight inches, I've folded the fabric back. There's the beginning of the bolt of fabric. I've folded it back on itself and pinned it top and bottom and creased it with my finger. I then come along with the iron and just did a little iron in the center there. I've pinned that at the eight. So that's now what I'd consider one page. And there's my fold. I've then concertinaed it again, created the next one. I might just pop a pin in there. Okay. And there. So that full five meters is now concertinaed, ironed, finger pressed and ironed. So it's sitting now ready. So there's all the folds for the spine and there's all the folds on the other side for as you flip through your book. Now I haven't yet counted out how many pages I've got. I started to write on them and I thought, no, I don't need to know that yet because when I got to the very end, my eight inch width gave me this little scrap left at the end which I've folded pinned and that could have fitted there that would just be too perfect but it didn't but it doesn't matter because let's say I want to extend this book I can um, stitch in here a piece of fabric and away I go again so you can see how the concertina is just a brilliant way of doing this. Let's say I do six pages and that's it. I'm finished. I'm not going to do any more. I could cut. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I could cut straight through here and I'm ready to go with more pages concertinaed. Now, if you remember, if you remember, I'm doing a red and a blue. So maybe, maybe, I don't know, I might end up cutting this. One will be red, one will be blue. Two different books, two different storage options, two different buntings. They can be mixed, they could be separate. I think I mentioned that in video two that they might be combined or they might be themed to a certain color scheme for a Christmas function, like just red or just blue. So that is my concertina um, book prepped. I'm caught in a thread here on my bracelet now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use my um, crochet cotton that I do all of my running stitch with through there um, and I'm going to go through each one of these pages and I'm actually going to do a running stitch right around the perimeter so for example and I'm even going to rule it I think because I want it to look fairly neat now if you have been watching my previous videos, I might come in, I'll come in that edge by half an inch. If you've watched my previous videos, you'll know that I'm going to remove all of my pieces and uh, use them around the house at Christmas. And then they'll pop back into my journal to be stored when we're not doing Christmas decorations. So my book, will look rather empty around Christmas and I don't want that. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around every one of these pages with a running stitch, probably just in beige. I'm, I don't think I'm going to highlight it, keep it neutral. And that will secure my pages of con concertina so that as I pick it up and flip it around and pin things, it'll all sort of hold together. Does that make sense? And by drawing a few lines, it'll be straight-ish. It'll give me a, a rough guide that, you know, if I'm watching a movie and I'm constantly looking at the screen, this will make sure that at least when I get to the end of a row, it will be looking pretty, pretty nice. So I'm going to rule myself some lines. I don't think it's cheating. It's just 
you know, trying to make it look like it's not a dog's breakfast, I guess. So that will be my project to do with my internal pages. Then they will be all stretched, ready to go. I'm yet to think about my spine and I'm thinking they probably will end up being stitched down here into something so that in its entirety, it's a nice little book, which will then fit within my card cover, which is also going to be the main piece that holds this all together. Of course, this will get really thick. I'm, I'm picturing this thing to being, you know, four or five inches thick, which will just be gorgeous. Hence why it might end up two books, a red one and a blue. I, I don't know where this will end up. It's becoming bigger than Ben-Hur. So, but at least now my cover is of independent to everything. I can decorate it. I can use it as a uh, display element at Christmas as well. My internals are here ready to take the um, storage of all of these um, pieces. So let's grab a couple pieces that we've finished. So the front, I will probably use that for a title page, which I haven't even thought about yet. But let's say that's a title page. So then I'm going to open it up and that'll all be stitched. I will be able to either cover this into one piece and then it will just be pinned using my garment pins or my French safety pins that I showed you in video two. That will just be pinned into position and it's stored, ready to go. Number two might be here number three, number four, and away I go. Or I could, which I'm tending towards, actually pinning the number piece, the advent section at the top, and my panel at the bottom. So let's say I don't want to use the numbers this particular Christmas, and I just wanna pick a selection of pieces to put on my bunting. I might pick this one and then I might go into the journal and pick another one and another one or create some sort of uh, theme. So I'm tending towards keeping them separate. Whether that's going to be too much, um, you know, coverage um, of book, uh, you know, size of book, probably, but does it really matter? Another suggestion that someone gave me is uh, in their family, they do the sun every sunday leading up to christmas so that potentially let me have a look at a calendar <clears throat> you may only need to do the number pieces let's have a look at a quick calendar at december um one two three four maybe five so maybe in your journal, you have only five of these for the, the year that we have five weeks leading up to Christmas. For the years we have four leading up to Christmas, you'd only have up to the numeral four. You could then do, uh, I could do a blue version and I could do a red version. So there'd be eight units. Then I can do as many as these as I like in any theme and I keep adding and whatever. I then... Um, could put these at the back. I could have my pieces at the front. It's becoming like a decorator element that you go to and you pull out of it what you want for that year. A theme, a colour, a story, only a few numbers to make an element of L um, Advent or maybe it's just the pieces. Those pieces are straight up onto your bunting with no calendar component. So you can see the versatility that I'm trying to create for myself here because, you know, at the end of the day, we might all go to um, a relative's house and they want me to bring some Christmas decorations, which is usually the task I get given. I can take this with and design a piece for maybe dinner and then I could change it the next day. So Christmas Eve, you could have it looking a certain way. Christmas Day, you could have it looking a certain way. You can see the opportunities that we could have with this journal of stitchery. So I'm just, I'm really pleased with the way this is coming together. And I think now I've got a plan. 
I really do. I know I'm at video four and I wish I had have covered all this in probably one video, but I couldn't. I was still, you can hear it in my videos, I'm still sort of fleshing it out and I'm, I'm using you guys to actually brainstorm it by talking out aloud. It's like you're all sitting around my craft table and I'm like, what about that? What about this? And I can then read your comments the next couple of days. I'm like, oh yeah, I didn't think of that and I could do this. And so it's been a fantastic little journey to sort of plan this out, if you will. So this is video four. I'm pretty much got it sorted now. I don't think there'll be too much more other than the spine, which I'm going to do at a later date because I don't know how many pieces I'm going to make or have time to make. The spine piece may happen next year, next Christmas, because I may not be at that stage. The cover should be pretty straightforward. I'll come up with something. Maybe the girls will give me a prompt that just needs to be epically big. And, you know, I like one thing that comes to mind is I've got snowflakes. I just love snowflakes and I love crocheted snowflakes. And I've always wanted to crochet a set for myself. I've got a book. It's somewhere in here. I've got an actual book. And I said to my um, friend, Mary Ann, who just loves crocheting too, that I just don't have time and the year is sliding on. And I really, really want to show everyone this book I've got. I must dig it out. I think it's 100 snowflake patterns. Um, it's a very blue cover. So you may already know of it. I'm hoping Mary Ann, if I give her the yarn and the book, that she can make some for me. And then I can sort of show you some of the different styles of uh, snowflakes. And I haven't for years. Remember when we used to starch our doilies to make them sit nice and flat? We don't seem to do that anymore. Um, I love that effect. And I'm thinking I'm going to starch them and then put a ribbon on them and hang them on my Christmas tree because I have a pop of white through my Christmas theme. Hence the blue and the red and the white. So this cover, maybe the girls will have a prompt that is snow or snowflakes or something like that in the winter section, the winter journal section. So this would be perfect for a snowflake scene and they, you know, all crocheted snowflakes. So who knows? I'm not sure what the girls are up to. I'm sure they've got lots of great ideas for us. But in the back of my head, I have this, this snowflake thing happening. So yeah, stay tuned. And hopefully I can convince Mary Ann to go, sit and crochet, you know, a dozen snowflakes, all different styles, some of which I can use in here, plus turn into decorations and show you that book. But that's another day. My goodness me, thank goodness we have six months to get this all together because I think I'm going to need every little bit of it. Anyway, I will leave it at that because I think that's pretty much a good plan of attack for me. So I'm ready now just to sit down, relax and carry on stitching. Okay, everyone, I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.